Welcome to the Peaceful Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Rosensweet, mom of three young people, peaceful parenting coach, and your cheerleader and guide on all things parenting. Each week, we'll cover the tools, strategies, and support you need to end the yelling and power struggles and encourage your kids to listen and cooperate so that you can enjoy your family time. I'm happy to say we have a great relationship with our three kids. The teen years have been easy and joyful, not because we're special unicorns, but because my kids were raised with peaceful parenting. I've also helped so many parents just like you stop struggling and enjoy their kids again. I'm excited to be here with you today and bring you the insight and information you need to make your parenting journey a little more peaceful. Let's dive into this week's conversation. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of the Peaceful Parenting Podcast. I have a question for you. Do you want your child or children to be happy? I'm pretty sure that the answer is going to be yes. Of course, we all want our kids to be happy, but parenting with that goal of happiness in day-to-day life is troublesome. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, it's unrealistic, right? Like into every life, a little rain must fall, which is true suffering or unhappiness is really part of the human condition and of course it looks different at different ages you know for a little kid not having you know another tv show or having to stop playing that's suffering for them it might feel tempting to try to take away kids suffering or prevent their suffering but really you know life is filled with suffering big or small depending on how old they are and what's going on in their lives so It's just real, really, it's unrealistic to think that we can parent in a way that our kids will avoid all suffering. So right off the bat, I know you're nodding along going, of course, Sarah, of course, there's suffering in life. Why is it still so hard for us as parents when our kids are unhappy? And why do we sometimes make some parenting poor decisions when our kids are unhappy, when we want them to be happy? Sometimes when our kids are unhappy, it makes us really, really uncomfortable, right? Like, of course it's uncomfortable and hard for us to see our child in distress or crying or miserable, and we want to end it. We don't want them to be unhappy, but that can lead to a couple different traps. One is that sometimes we might be permissive and we might say yes to things that we don't want to say yes to because we're so afraid of them being unhappy with us or them not liking us. One thing that's helpful is if you find yourself in that situation a lot, Um, afraid to set reasonable limits because it's really, really hard for your child to be mad at you or your child to be unhappy with you or to feel worried that your child's not going to like you. That may be a sign that there's some uh, work that you need to do on yourself. What, What does it feel like to you if somebody doesn't like you? Is it important to you in other areas of your life that everyone like you? If that's the case for you and that's challenging for you when your child's unhappy with you and saying, you know, you're the meanest mommy or the meanest daddy, you know, maybe it's time for some some soul searching or some inner work and to remember and remind yourself with so much self-compassion that you are worthy and lovable even if your child is unhappy with you or even if your child is telling you that you're the meanest mommy or meanest daddy in the world. So that's just a little sign that if you're afraid to set limits because you're afraid your child will be unhappy with you, that maybe doing some work on what does that mean to you? How is it scary for people not to like you or especially people who you love not to like you or to be unhappy with you and just give yourself so much compassion and remind yourself that you are worthy and lovable even when your child is unhappy with you another trap that i've seen parents fall into and this is super super common um, because our culture has such a hard time with emotion and with difficult feelings that when we see a child who's suffering who's unhappy because of something that's happened or a limit that we've set that we try to stop the feelings. We're so uncomfortable with our difficult feelings that we try to stop them or shut them down. And we might not even realize that that's what we're doing. In fact, most of the time we don't realize that that's what we're doing. I see this happening in two main ways and they may seem contradictory to each other, but they're actually two sides of the same coin. One side of that coin of that shut down the feelings, stop feeling that way, is we try to fix it. So we, you know, we try to give them what they want or we try to, you know, okay, okay, you can watch another show or, you know, just stop crying. I'll get you a new one if their toy broke or whatever it is. We try to fix it. And and that is a way that we try to end their suffering by, you know, fixing the problem or making it go away. Another way, the flip side of this same coin of shutting down the feelings is that we take on this suck it up buttercup stance. That's what I call it, suck it up buttercup. We're dismissive of their feelings. We tell them that it's not a big deal. You know, 
I've heard some people say that even their parents said to them, if, you know, don't cry about this or I'll give you something to cry about. So that sort of toughen up, it's not a big deal. Why are you making such a big deal of this? You know, it's only ice cream, it's not important. That is a way that we also are shutting down our kids' feelings. So whether we're trying to fix it or whether we're saying suck it up, buttercup, both of those things send a message to our child, don't feel this way. And it teaches them that their feelings are an emergency. You know, this must be so dangerous that my mom or dad or caregiver is trying to end this feeling that I'm having. Therefore, big feelings are dangerous in an emergency. And that is actually going to hamper your child's emotional resilience in the long run. Emotional resilience, I think, is something we all want our kids to have. And what that is, is this feeling of I can handle it, right? These are some big feelings that I'm having and I'm going to be okay again. I know that I'm going to get through it and I'm going to be okay again. So if we want our child to have emotional resilience, we have to be okay with them being unhappy. And we actually have to go one step further and welcome those feelings. This is so sad. This isn't what you wanted. Oh my goodness, your toy broke. And we have to just really be there with compassion and not try to stop the feelings and empathize with them and try to let them really move through those difficult feelings. And then when they do get to the other side and we haven't tried to stop those difficult feelings, that is when they start building that emotional resilience. Emotional resilience isn't that you don't get upset about things. It's that you get upset and you recover and you're not afraid of the feelings. That is true emotional resilience. And that is what is at stake if we try to end our child's unhappiness, however that looks like, whether it's being permissive, whether it is you know permissive and, and not setting limits, whether it is trying to fix things when they are upset, or whether it's being dismissive and shutting down the feelings on the surface, stop it, stop crying, there's nothing to cry about. And I'll just add, I hope you know that I'm not saying that we are going to be you know cold in the face of our child's suffering or unhappiness, or that we are not gonna try our hardest to listen to them, take their preferences into account, and be flexible and be kind and loving and generous towards them. Of course, we're going to do all of those things. But even when we do all of those things, there are limits that we will need to set. There are things that are going to happen that are beyond our control. So there will be plenty of time for you to practice this skill of welcoming your child's difficult feelings. And you can still be a loving and caring parent who's you know, tries hard to make their child's life as wonderful as possible, then don't worry about it. You will have a chance to practice these skills. I think another thing that I want to add uh, before we end here is that we do have this message that to be good parents, it means our children are happy. And I don't know exactly where that comes from, maybe because that's our goal as parents, right? We want our kids to grow up to be happy. Like I said in the beginning of this episode, of course we want them to be happy. However, we have to be aware that if they're not, it's not a reflection on us as parents. We have to be really conscious of that because I think that we can sort of have that be a trigger for us sometimes and we lose patience with them or we get frustrated or, you know, maybe we're less than understanding when they're unhappy. And later when we look back on it, it, it's hard to understand why we had that reaction. But I think that there's this deep down shame trigger that if our kid is unhappy, then that means that we're doing it wrong, right? That means that we're not a good parent. And if we're not a good parent, we're not a good person. If we're not a good person, we're unworthy and unlovable. And I think this is especially true for, you know, those of you listening to parenting podcasts, it's because you care so much about being the best parent that you can be. And it may be that unconsciously, because of this message that good parents have happy kids, when your child is unhappy, you feel like you're a failure. So I just want to tell you right now, if I haven't convinced you already about the importance of being realistic and knowing that our child will have unhappy times because suffering is part of life and being able to welcome those feelings so that they become emotionally resilient and also, frankly, so that they see you as a person to turn to when they're unhappy and someone who will just be there for them. All that aside, I mean, it's important stuff, but all that aside, I just want you to remind yourself that even if your child is unhappy, you are still a great parent and that your child being unhappy does not mean that you're doing it wrong. Being aware of that in the moment is such a key to staying calm because if you say your child gets really upset, calls you the meanest mommy, 
is super unhappy and then you're not aware that you have the story that you're telling yourself, I must be a failure if my child is so unhappy with me, then you're going to not be able to stay calm and self-regulated in the moment. So when your child's unhappy, give yourself some love. It's okay that my child is unhappy. Suffering is a part of life. I'm going to welcome these feelings and this is not a reflection on me or the job that I'm doing as a parent. I hope that was helpful for you and that you're able to remind yourself that unhappiness is a part of life and that it can, if we respond to it with welcoming feelings, it can help your child develop emotional resilience. And also it's not a reflection on you. And so the next time your child is, you know, shouting at you that you're mean or they hate you, don't take it personally and recognize that this is just part of being a parent sometimes and it's hard. It's really, really hard when these little people or big people that we love most in the world are unhappy with us. It can be uncomfortable. It can make you do some soul searching about your own ideas of self-worth. It can make you doubt yourself and have to reevaluate what it means to be a good parent. And I hope that you will do these things. It's part of the journey and it's so worth it when you do take up this invitation to look at what your children's feelings bring up in you and to challenge yourself to welcome those feelings no matter how hard they are, how unhappy your child might be or how uncomfortable it makes you. If you thought this episode was helpful, I would love it if you would share it with a friend and please leave us a review on Spotify or iTunes. That would be really amazing. We want to reach as many families as we can and spread the word about peaceful parenting. I'd also love to see you inside my free Facebook group, Peaceful Parenting with Sarah Rosensweet. Someone just commented the other day that this was her favorite place on the internet, and that just made me so happy. So I will see you next time. We'll be back with another episode, and until then, hang in there. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. I hope you found this conversation insightful and exactly what you needed in this moment. Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Remember that I'm rooting for you. I see you out there showing up for your kids and doing the best you can. Sending hugs over the airwaves today. Hang in there. You've got this.